بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم so today we move on to uh, terms so yesterday we discussed definitions and circular definitions manic jamic definitions and we slightly touch on genus and fossil meaning genus and differential fossil and genus okay now today we're going on to signification so we we, as we said we have a concept and then that concept has a term so for example you have a concept for that word for that idea that is a, there's a word for that's called a term and then that term is defined and then we said definitions they have a, like you know uh, do you need definition not definitions and you have all this mantic pro mantic anti mantic etc but basically we have those terms now today we can discuss how terms are used and how they denote the meaning so for example the word football okay when we say football what comes to your mind well this will come to your mind that's, that's, that's what you have, there's also a valid point here with a sport. So this is football, this is the item. So this in Arabic, we call this a dal. So dalla yadullu dalaratan, to show, to denote. So this is the thing that denotes something. And the thing that has been denoted is called the madlul. So, any, so, the, so the term is basically the dal. The thing being denoted is called the madlul. So the concept is called the madlul. Yes? Okay. And this idea, and this, this idea that this word has been coined for a particular idea, a particular concept. It's called that. Oh, I forgot to copy and paste. It's called dalala. What's it called? Dalalatun. What's that called? Dalala. So the idea, what's the idea of the concept called? The madlul. The word that denotes, the term that denotes the idea is called what? Dal. Dal. And the, the link between the word, the term, and the idea, the concept is called what? Dalala. Yes? So far so good? Yes? Okay. Now, for example, let me give an example. The Quran. If I said here, let's, 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 she memorized the Quran. So the word Quran is a term. Okay? I read the, I read the Quran this morning. And his character, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was the Quran. Now, if you look at the word, the dal, which is the, the, the term, the way, do you see any difference in the, in the, three, in the three sentences? When I say she memorized the Quran, what do, you, what do you mean by that? The entire Quran. And I read the Quran this morning? Some, Some of the Quran. His character was the Quran? The rulings, huh? the, rulings and the... the rulings or something linked to the Quran, the idea of the Quran, the philosophy of the Quran, the character of the Quran, the teaching of the Quran. So now we have one word, have one term. But what it denotes in, in different circumstances is different. Are you following? So now... This is this is something that's very careful. So before we even get into the whole discussion and argument, etc., we have to make sure. Well, we have the concept. We have a right term for that concept. A term is determined. It is defined. And even after it's defined, are we using it? How are we using this? We don't misunderstand what is being said. So when we say when we have a, a, a word, a term, and that term denotes the entire madlul, that's called what. Dalalatun bil mutabaka. So tabaka yutabiku mutabakatan to match. So meaning what? The word, the dal, the, 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 the term encompasses the entire word it denotes. You got it? So it's called dalalatun bil mutabaka, dalal al mutabaka, al mutabaki. So we have different names for this. But it means mutabaka, means a complete signification. Uh, the word denotes the entire madlul. Are you following me? I mean, you have a partial denote, it's called Dalalatun bit tadammun. That the word is denoting something, a part of that entire word. You following me? And the third one is called Dalalatun bil iltizam. That the word is not denoting the entire madlul, or the entire concept, not a part of the concept, but something which is linked or heavily linked to that concept. You can't sing. So you can either denote the entire word, what's that called? What's that called? It's called complete signification. And what does that mean in, in, in Arabic? Dalalatun bil mutabaka. And if it's a partial signification, what's it called? Dalalatun bil tadammun. And if it denotes not a part or not a whole, but something linked to it, it's called what? Dalalatun bil iltizam. Understand? And why is it important so that we know what we're talking about? So let's say, for example, let's say, for example, he's a lion. Now, if I say he's a lion, what kind of so we have the term, 
lion and the lion denotes a, a, a kind of animal that we all have in our mind, correct? But when I say the word he is a lion in here, am I using this word to denote part, complete signification, partial, or was the third one? I forgot the third one. Implicative. Is it the lazum bil mutabaka, bil tazamun, or bil iltizam? Bil iltizam. What do I remember by here? He is? He has a characteristic of a lion. He's brave. This is, by, this is basic day to day language. The lion is furry. Furry. Fury. It's two hours, isn't it? It's furry. Huh? Huh? Yeah, two hours. I think I'm teaching mantic in English. Yeah? So the lion is furry. Is it fur? Hairy. Whatever, yeah? I'm not teaching science as well. So what happens here? What are you talking about? The lion is furry? The lion is You see the whole lion? Or part of the lion? Or very large part of the lion? You can you get it. Wait, what is it? The, large, the entire lion or the part of the lion? Part of the lion. Because you know, if the teeth comes out, it's not even furry, is it? The, the, the part of the teeth. So it means they're part of it. My car is cheap. Hmm? The full car. So the last one will mutabaka. My car is broken. Bitadamun. Why bitadamun? And this is my car, yeah, my part is broken. But generally speaking, the engine is broken, the wall is broken. The brakes or the light, something is broken, not everything. Yes? You follow? It? So that's the dam. Okay. Are you a chicken? What's this one here? Uh, Lil Why is it The characteristics. Have you ever seen a live chicken? Whole chicken. Motabaka. Chicken is tasty. Motabaka. Have you ever eaten the beak and the feet? And the, and the, the, what do you call it? The cup. Yes? Have you ever eaten those? No? So it's tadamun. Okay. Now, now see, this is a very easy example. Let me give you an example. When I was younger, we learned in Marissa, if you go to the toilet, you wuzu, breaks. Now, what's the problem here? Huh? So when the teacher said this to us, he's been using polite words, isn't it? So he used like more appropriate words. So what's his dalada? So going to the toilet, the meaning of this is basically relieving yourself, passing stool or urine. Okay? And I took this as well. Well, I was like scared when I was going to brush your teeth or something. I like, was well, broken. So I should talk literally. So again, so what happens? What happens? As we, as we have a term, and sometimes the term are using the iltizami meaning, the tazamuni meaning, the mutabaqi meaning. So you have to make sure that you may so, so the first issue we had was to define something. What does it mean? When we, even though we have a definition, we know what this term means. But are using this term wholly, specifically, it's important. No animals allowed. Imagine a hotel has no animals allowed. Hmm? Okay, what does animals mean? What does animals mean? Well, but that's not what they mean though, isn't it? So if you have a hotel has no animals allowed, then no one's allowed in it because humans are animals, isn't it? Technically, scientifically speaking. So you can say, well, so this is this can later on we can you can analyze it later on as well. Remember this example, but we do it later on in terms of uh, terminologies. So scientifically, what's an animal? Exactly, exactly. And this is a joke. It's not serious. This is not going to really apply here, apply here. But for example, in certain places it can apply. And I'll give you a few like loose ones. We're going to be more serious ones later on. Okay, logic teaches. That's the point. Isn't it? Logic. What do you do? You have single words. You have terms, definitions. Then you use those statements and you produce arguments. And the Prophet says in the Hadith, I guarantee a house in Jannah for one who gives up arguing. No? So therefore, if you miss logic class, then what happens? You go to Jannah. Yeah? No? What's the problem here? The arguing is uh, used differently. It's used differently. Okay, so this is obviously like a bit dopey ones. But you get the idea. So you may have a word argument, but one word, but in each person's mind. So this, this is what you call it here. Uh, this is what you call here the equivocation, where you have a term, but everyone uses it the same way. Now let me give you a more serious example here. We have the word sunnah. Okay? Now when you have the word sunnah, what does sunnah mean? Huh? Yeah. It can mean way. I mean, okay, when a Muslim says sunnah, what does it mean? The way the Prophet But even within this word, it has multiple sections, multiple parts. You have, for example, 
Sunnah Nuhuda. Obviously, if you have an fiqh, yeah, you might. But Sunnah Nuhuda is basically the thing the Prophet ﷺ done as a part of religion. Salah, his zakah, his sawm, his hajj, the way he con tra conducted transaction, the way he did things. Then you have zawaid and hud adiya and uh, zawaid, similar. But basically things which he done, he done it, it's his way. But he never done it as part of religion. Like he rode on a camel, he drank from the well, he never drank from, they am trying to say he drank from a well, what else? They sacrificed, they ate dates, they ate, well, the way they, they, they traveled. So these are things he done. Now, what happens sometimes is you have, the word sunnah is being used. So for example, فَمَنْ رَغِبَ أَنْ سُنَّةِ فَلَيْسَ مِنِّي Now the word sunnah, what does it have now? We know the word sunnah, it has, it's a term. But this term has multiple sections, multiple parts. Now for example, you might say for example, uh, so let's start eating, I don't know, cucumbers one, with the Prophet, he, he like cucumbers and date together. So if you, if you say, no, I'm not really keen on that, that's astaghfirullah. How dare you go and get sunnah from Prophet So, that person, the one person who's making that argument, what's he, what's his, what's, how he's taking our sunnah? He's taking it as a mutabaqah. But is the Prophet, when the Prophet used this word, is he using it in every single aspect of his life? Or is he using it in the parts which are sunnah al huda? Do you understand? So you see this and sometimes, people make, for example, somebody will say, for example, obviously, whatever the Prophet did, even if it's not a part of his deen, it's probably the better way. Like, for example, like you have two person miswak. So obviously miswak is better because why? Look at if environmental perspective. There's no plastic involved. There's no machinery involved. There's no, there's no garbage involved. Then we don't know the harms it has on your thing. Toothpaste, we have a miswak. It's probably going to be better. But, so wherever the, so wherever the Prophet done, the way he, he's probably better. That's, not, that's irrelevant. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about this general academic discussion. So for example, the Prophet the way he, uh, when he went to toilet, he, had, he would use, he was set on the ground. He did, they didn't have the, English toilets that we had. But the, the, the sitting on the ground on the, the Asian way of squat toilets, it's much healthier. And that's, that's irrelevant. It's much better, much healthier, much cleaner, etc. However, just on a pure academic discussion, if you say, for example, a person doesn't build one business in his house, has he turned away from the way of the Prophet? Because the Prophet never commanded this. It may be better, maybe that's, that's irrelevant. Whatever the Prophet then, we know that Allah taught the Prophet the best way. But irrelevant of that, if a person doesn't have this, you know, I find I can't do it, my knees hurt. Would you say that he's not doing? Because this, this, this is a sunnah here. The Prophet said, "Well, it turns my sunnah meaning what? The sunnah al-huda." But sometimes people don't understand the sunnah, and they say, "Well, they make it as a very large concept." Do you understand? So the Prophet is referring to sunnah, and he refers to one aspect of what we know as sunnah. So the word, the word sunnah, the term sunnah, has been used, but what does it refer to? One. So you get confusion in there. Okay. You following? So what happens in a term is you must make sure that. The, 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 you understand, so what is, you have to define what that means, so you have an idea, concept, and everybody, both parties need to know what that means, and for that you need a definition, had, and you can have any different definition, and you have the, the, the genes and the fossil definitions, or you can have the genus differential definitions, or any, any definition that will help you to clarify that, what that means. After it's been defined, even though it's clear to everybody that this word means this, sometimes you still have that issue with, how is that person using that word? Are you following me? Is he using it with mutabaqa, with tazamun, or with iltizam? You follow him? Okay. Another, yeah, so far so good. Yes. Another, next masala now is, when you see two terms, what is the relationship between these two terms? So, what we have here, for example, a plane and aeroplane. How do these two relate? What's the difference between two of them? Same. It's different languages, some European and some, one is European and one is American. So these two are basically the same. So sometimes you have a discussion and we're using two different words, but it's actually have the same concept. You get what I'm saying? So an American uses the word plane, a European uses the word aeroplane, because I think aero is some French, I think. So now you have two words, but the same concept. Now you're having a big fight that no, I never had a sign airplane, I signed an airplane. This, you will have this example, people know what this means. But you can have cases like this, I'll bring up examples later on, where you have two words but the same idea. Are you following? The same concept, but two words for the same concept. This, the link between these two now, we use, I know that this, I think in modern logic there's a, a bit of a complex term for this, I don't know it. Somebody has mentioned it before, but I don't know it. In the Arab it's called tasawim, or al tasawim. What sawwa you sawwi mean? To make equal. So tasawi, both parties are equal. So also you should also think, well, the words that we're using, are they mutasawi, are they different? What are we really debating about? So one is that the word must be, are they mutasawi? Are they equal or not? Yes? 
Following? Make sense? The next scenario is the two terms, the two terms can be what? What's married and married? They overlap, not overlap, separate, totally separate. They can never, there's two separate things. You call this tabayun. Tabayun means what? Bana yabinu, to be separate. Tabayun. So both, both of these are separate, absolutely separate. They don't, there's no overlap. These will remain the same. Women and mothers? Hmm? Some women are mothers, but some mothers are not women. No. No, what is it? So how did how did you pick this? All mothers are women. All mothers are women, but all women are no. not mothers. So then we have here like this. Yes? This is how it works. What's this called? Umum khusus mutlaq. Where it's called umumun wa khususun mutlaqun. Where one member, mothers, they all of them have to be under women, but not the other way around. Are you following? Yes? Tea and hot liquids? Can have co cold tea? Iced tea? And hot, some hot liquids? So you go a bit like this. So some of them can overlap and some of them are separate. So it's called umumun khusus min wajhin. So one aspect, from one aspect it, it overlaps. They overlap in some ways. So, when we have a term, we have a discussion, it's like, okay, how is the term being used? And if you're using two terms, then how do these two terms interrelate? So that we're very clear, okay, are, are the same words we're using, different words, that they have different, different implications, different concepts? Is it the same concept as certain parts issue? If you look at it again, I'm saying over and over again, majority of debates we have, the difference that we have, it's, like, it's, not, it's not because we're not clarified from the onset what's actually being discussed. Okay? Yeah. Okay, Hajj and pilgrimage. What's Hajj and pilgrimage? Similar, similar or different? No, pilgrimage. Depends what you call it. Pilgrimage. Have to define pilgrimage first. Yeah, what does pilgrimage mean? So if pilgrimage means, so again, depends on what pilgrimage is. So this is a trick question, kind of. So if pilgrimage refers to Hajj and pilgrimage, what does pilgrimage mean? Okay. Hajj and Umrah? Tabayun. They're both separate. Okay. Toilet and bathroom. What do you think? It depends what you define as toilet. Because in America, what's toilet? In America, they use bathroom as toilet. Mm. They don't say toilet, because toilet is a dirty word in Amer American, it's a bit unethical. So again, so you see where you have it. So when you're seeing different words, you know, okay, what are we... These are very obvious examples, but this, when it comes to the deepest thing that... Sometimes you come and say, no, we're talking to, using two different words, but they mean the same thing. Okay? Football and soccer? <laughs> exactly, isn't it? So if you mean football as in, okay, football, what we call football, and what Americans call soccer, that's the same thing. But what Americans call football, with that, you have called it football even though you use your hands the whole time. Yes? That's called what? So again, you, you see, you can have words in, our, have words in here which are, uh, which needs to be clarified. Okay, here, log logic, mantik, ilmul bahthi wal munadara. Yeah, let's see what happens here. Like some people are, because mantik is, is, is used a lot in certain things. So a lot of the, some people don't like man, the word mantik, because they're against mantik, you know, mantik is this. But they've written another book, so for example, in one university, they're not really keen on mantik. So the, the author, he wrote a book and he called it, Ilmul Bahthi Wal Manadhara. And it's got all the, all the things of mantik. But they call it Ilmul Bahthi Wal Manadhara. You get it? Because they say, well, mantik is something that's enough from, based from Greek philosophy and Greek is all Christian and all Islamic things and then we don't study mantik. But then he's got a book, same book. And in the beginning he says, these are all the kawaii of mantik, but it's called ilm al-bahth al So again, so it's again, so are you studying logic? Mantik al-bahth al same thing. So obviously ilm al-bahth al have a bit, a few more additions at the end, adab of thing, but the same thing, same concept. So you have different words, same idea. Do you understand? So whether they call it logic, whether they call it mantik, whether they call it it's the same thing. It's the same thing. There's nothing different in this. I guess a few examples are going to be longer. Okay, let's see for example how did it work. Qurayullah wa Rahman. So what happens? The Mufassir mentioned that the Prophet used to say, Ya Allah, Ya Rahman. So what was the question that Mushrikin raised? So they they took the word Allah and the word Rahman to be what? What nisbah did they assume between Allah and Rahman? Tabayun. In reality, what is it? Tasawi. 
Allah says, Allah wa Rahman, ayyam ma faltadu, falahu la sma'ul husna. These are Allah's names. And these names are uh, synonymous. This, 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 this tasawi between them. So there's no question there. Okay. You following? Okay. So now we've, we've, we've discussed how it's important for us to have. We have concepts. For these concepts, we have terms, and we have to define these terms. And then we, we discuss the differences between the relationship between different terms. Now sometimes, so we had a few examples. So sometimes what we have now, we have an issue where we're using terms, but in a way we're using terms, we have fallacy. What does fallacy mean? Like a flaw in our discussion, our argument, our, our debate, or what we're talking about, something's flawed in there. So the first flaw is, we're not using the words correctly, or we're both not using the word the same way. Okay. So one of the first things is called fallacy of equivocation. What's equivocation mean? That we're assuming the words to mean the same, but it's not the same. This is the English word, and I'll give you more examples. Here, let's have an example here. So it's not clear, but here. So you can't steal. So the guy said, why? People in baseball steal all the time. In the baseball, you can steal in baseball, steal a base. So people in baseball always steal, why can't I steal? So what's the point, what's the point here? Steal. Using the word steal, so he's using analogy. That's coming at the end. That if they can steal and everybody applauds for stealing, and I am stealing, so therefore my stealing is also going to be applaudable. But what's the fallacy? So he's using analogy to prove if they can steal and they are good at they get paid for stealing, and I'm stealing, and what's the thing? But what's the, what's the problem? The, the word the stealing, that is equivocation. That the word is same, stealing. However, the, the, the concept of stealing in the first cartoon or whatever is, is what different to the one in baseball. So even though the word is the same, you have what? Equivocation, you get problems. All trees have barks, every dog barks, therefore every dog is a tree. Again, equivocation. Oh, this is some doping ones, I'll give you some proper ones later on. Call me a cop. Okay, you're a cop. <laughs> you get this one. What's the problem here? What's the, what's the, what's the, what's the, the joke? Oh, no. Well, what's, the, what's the problem? So, yeah, so one the word call, one meaning of call is Ud'u, utlub li Seek for me, order a cab for me And the other one is call me cab, meaning Ud'u, name me Okay, I'll call you a cab, okay, you're a cab You get it? So, again, these are, these, these are So all, a lot of these jokes have equivocation, that one, the envelope one The envelope one it starts with E and ends with E and has one letter. It's an envelope. I tried that joke. No one laughed at that joke. I tried, I tried so hard to make that joke, but no one's laughing at that joke. So, so the letter, what's the problem letter? Letter, it only has one letter means what? In one it has an A, B, C letter. And one is a letter, the document. Okay. Let's get it more serious now. Okay. Now, so equivocation, they say many simply, but let's take a few examples here. So one, one problem or one way of equivocation is, we have one concept. What is it? One concept, but multiple words for it. So, for example, what's this? What is this? Huh? Tashahud? Yes, Salah. But what's it also called in Urdu, Gujarati, Turkish, Azerbaijan? Namaz. So, it's like, well, that's obvious. Everybody knows. Okay, let me give you an example. Now, again, I heard this one. It's one thing, a clip. Now again, if, if a great scholar or scholar makes a mistake, you probably think, oh, maybe they're tired, maybe they're not thinking through it properly. But this as an example. So somebody asked him, is there anything such as spirituality in the Quran? Yes? So what was the reply? He replied, no. There's no such as spirituality in the Quran. Now, is he wrong, technically speaking? No, no. What's, what's, what's spirituality mean in Arabic? What's the Arabic word for spirituality? Ruhaniya. Have you seen it in the Quran anywhere? Ruh, Ruhaniya, Ruhi. But what's the problem here? That, that the, see, there's, there's one concept here. So the word, the word, the word that the person asked about, explains spirituality to me. Now, yes, correct. Technically, that word does not, but when that person, when that person is, is, is talking about spirituality, he may not, he's not talking about the word spirituality. He's looking at the idea of spirituality. And it's not in the Quran, for example, when they heard the, the verse of the Quran, they fall and they cry and they have khushu, they, they have raghab, raghab and warahaba, they have fear, they have worry, they have love, they have uh, uh, all of these things. This is all, this is what it is. You understand? So again, what's happening in that answer? The answer has a, a, the, the fallacy of equivocation that you're saying, okay, well, there is, so spirituality, ruhaniya, and all of these other things, they're all one concept. That the person has chosen one word to, exp to ask that question That is there, what's ruhani in the Quran, what is spiritual in the Quran? And you say, no, there's no spiritual in the Quran 
So technically, yes, your question is not, your answer is not wrong, technically speaking, but your job is not to do a technical job. A, muf, a mufti or a, a sheikh or a scholar, a guide, a da'i, he's supposed to exp understand the nature again, understand what the question is about, and go a bit deeper than the question, not the skin deep, go a bit deeper, and say, well, okay, you're asking for the word, maybe you can correct them, say, well, the word ruhani is not used, because the word taqwa is used, and taqwa includes, maybe you can do one of that if you want to. But here, convocation is happening here, that the person has used one word, and you've negated that word, it's correct. There's no namaz, namaz not for us. How's the mass for us? Does it come to the Quran? Rosa. Rosa is in, in, in Urdu. Gujarati is what? So, some is not for us. There's no, there's no such thing as a Rosa in Islam. That's a, a Asian bid'a. But that's not the point. The point is what? That you have to understand, go beyond the words and look at the ma'ani. Do you understand? So you might think, well, so this, this is why we're saying here that the, the mantiq is important. Not, not mantiq, mantiq, logic, all of these things is that so you understand, go a bit deeper and say, well, do you know what? It's not just the words, it has, you have to understand all of these things that, okay, you're using one word, that person's using another word. I can go a bit more here. Another example, like for example, I'm not going to fix him maslah here. I'm not going to fix him maslah. But you have to, let's say for example, some people say, well, the earliest scholar allowed music. I don't know, you have to discuss, that's a mufti. Okay, now, when you, if you were to give a fatwa, I say, okay, the earliest scholars gave fatwa, the music is permissible. You have to find, find that in a fake discussion. But, when, if you tell, if you look at the word music, it's the same. But when you see somebody in 2022, when, he, when they say the word music to them, when you have the word music to somebody in 100 Hijri, 200 Hijri, I'm sure there's a bit of a difference. Okay, I'm saying, what is that listening to? I think it's listening to all of these songs with all these uh, nudity and all profan profane profanity and all these lewd lyrics and all that kind of stuff. You get a thing? So if it is proven and if it is a mustard, that's such a fake job, that's not a job. But you have to also even go a step further and say, well, when you say the word music, what do you mean by the word music? The music in that term, are definitely not gonna, even, even for example, okay, it's folklore, for example, you have called African folklore music, this like, you know, that is, even that is a different music that we have in our Western cultures. So you have to say, so it's not simply of just a matter of being very, you have to look at what we put understand from your words. Do you understand? So when you're moved to your, I think you have to understand, well, there's a word and what comes behind that, what, what's the implication of that word? If you say, well, okay, it's not a problem, you have to say, well, is, is it the same thing? There's loads of other things like this as well. Okay, so one is what we had in the top, we had what? Two words for one meaning. Now we're looking, well, you can also have equivocation, I don't know if it's called equivocation, but you can have one word with two meanings. So it's on bat. Bat and bat. Now, what's the benefit? Give me an example. You can have one word, same thing. You have one word, two meanings. Sometimes you can have the meaning, the general meaning or the linguistic meaning. And you can have what? The specific meaning. Actually, make a note of that. It's come up later on. What was that one I gave you an example of? I said, make a note of that. Yeah, animal. So, for example, the word animal is a word. Now, the context will help us understand. We will make, we don't, no one makes a mistake. No animals allowed. You know, humans are not including this. Animals mean more like pets. But the word animal has two meanings. One is a scientific meaning or the linguistic meaning, general meaning, animal's meaning. How do we use it in, in daily activity? And when we say animal, it means here, uh, what? Like uh, either pets or domesticated animals. And scientifically, what does it mean? The scientific meaning, the, the, the science specific meaning is what? Anything that lives and grows as, a, as an animal and moves. Do you understand? So, so what happened? Let me, give you, let, me, let me give you a quick example here. The word bid'ah. The word bid'ah is made from the bada ayabda'u, badi'u samawati will innovate to start something. So when you use the word bid'ah, when you use bid'ah, one is a linguistic meaning, which means anything new, something new. Anything is bid'ah. Yes? You get it? Whether it's to do with religion, whether it's to do with cars, like Formula One is a bid'ah, meaning something new. Uh, uh, what do you call it? Twitter is a bid'ah, something new, it never existed before. And one is innovation meaning, Innovation within religion, which is unacceptable and causes a dis which causes a disfiguration of the religion. That's also us. That's bid'ah. So now we have one word, but it has two different meanings. Are you following me? There's one word bid'ah, but it has two different meanings, two different applications, but it's the same word. Now, if you look at it here, something new in innovation. So something new is right in the Quran. The Prophet never wrote the Quran. It was all verbal transmission. And Abu Bakr radiAllahu anhu in his time he wrote as a bid'ah, isn't it? Linguistically, in, in, so because we're using the word bid'ah, bid'ah, it gets confusing. So that's why, for example, you have this whole long discussion. Is there such a thing as bid'ah hasana, bid'ah sayyi'ah? 
is a good bid'ah and a bad bid'ah. So those people who can't really think beyond saying, oh no, how can you have a bad, a good bid'ah? Bid'ah, kullu bid'atin dalala, every bid'ah is dalala. See, but you talk about kullu bid'atin, this, every, every one of this, kullu is bad. We're talking about this. But because the word bid'ah is one word for two terms, two concepts. So when you say kullu bid'atin dalala, you say, oh, you can't have bid'ah. So yeah, just think for a while, sometimes like, you have to think a bit, think it calm. You think that, that ulama didn't know this hadith, the kullu bid'in dalala, they cannot understand this much, a kullu bid'in dalala, and they still sing this bid'ah hasana sayyah, like, you know, they're not that dopey, innit? like, how can it become ulama, you don't even know this much. You get what I'm saying? So what's happening here is equivocation, that the word bid'ah can be used for two meanings, one is a linguistic bid'ah, and one is used for a terminological Islamic bid'ah. So when you say the word bid'ah, writing the Quran is a bid'ah, science of fiqh, fiqh that makes the Prophet it's, it's Islam, it's deen. Writing hadith, who wrote hadith in Prophet Muhammad? Nobody. Well, obviously, okay, that's not a very good example because they did write, but like having a book of hadith and chains and all that, nobody had that in the Prophet sometimes. Islam University. That's bid'ah. Da'ulum, bid'ah. PowerPoints, bid'ah. Yes? Printing books, bid'ah. Tarawi. What do Umar say? This is a bid'ah, ni'mal bid'ah. It's a very good bid'ah. What do you mean? So, I know. Or tarawi is a bid'ah, but what do you mean by this bid'ah? Are you talking about. So, because the same word is two different places. If you had a different word, we say here, uh, something new and bid'ah if it's deen so this is something new but the sahaba when they done it that means that they had some kind of evidence for them they're not like they're not gonna they, they have more taqwa than you knew to do bid'ah you get what I'm saying so the problem happens is equivocation that we're using one word for two terms and a person who's not well learned or well versed he can mix up two of them again it causes the confusion and what's the innovation the innovation is what the innovation is the bad thing. So, so we say this is all, this is all, the word bid'ah can be applied to all of these. But when we say some people are using the word bid'ah and they mean this, and they say, oh, this is bid'ah hasana. They say, this is bid'ah hasana. I mean, these are good things that people have done, meaning it's something new, but it's not the bid'ah which the Prophet has said, kullu bid'ah in dalala. You understand? It, the problem happens in the, 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 the term that is equivocation, you know, you, they're mixing up the terms. Yes, making sense? Are clear? Yes? Okay. Another type of fallacy regarding, um, regarding words is composition. What do you say? So basically, if something is true of a small part, you assume that it applies to everything. So, for example, if you say, for example, here, atoms are colored. Can you say atom? You can't say, atoms have colors? No. no, they have colors. What are sheep made of? Atoms, so therefore sheep don't have color. No, that's an argument. So the argument, the, 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 the flow of the argument is correct. However, you, the, 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 the logic behind it is not that. If something that has a part, it does not necessarily apply to the whole. It's called a fallacy of uh, composition or division. Composition. Where you, you're assuming that, that everything, that even though the individual has it. For example, a human being is, for example, say fiqh, a human being is pure. Meaning what? Not every part of you, the blood is not pure. It means that like, your body is not. So it's like, so if your body is, it means your, your feces is pure. You get what I'm trying to say? So it's like, you get it? So, so it's, are you, you can't assume that what is being said of, of a, of a juz, of, 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 of a pass of kul, in all cases. It can be, it's not necessary. Clorox is bad for you. Clorox has water. Yes? So therefore, what is bad for you? Again, what applies to the whole or the parts does not apply to the whole. Okay? And then the opposite, division. You attribute members to its members but it's true to the whole. So if one, if it applies to the, if it applies to the whole, then it applies to the, the part as well. So for example, the Chicago Bulls were the best in the 1990s. Basketball. Mine was basketball. So therefore, are we going to assume from there that every single member of that team was the best player in the 90s? That's a, a logical fallacy. Yes? No? So if you have that team, for example, you say, well, okay, uh, so Luke Longley, nobody don't know who that Luke Longley is. Like, who's that guy? Who's this guy? But he plays football, so he has the best player in NBA, no? He's not. Because what applies to the cool does not always apply to the juice. Like, for example, uh, okay, we say, for example, the best time, I think I've got an example here. Yeah, the best of all time is the Sahaba. And the Tabi'un. Yes? Is that, is everybody agrees with the Ijma of the Ummah. Okay, so therefore, Hajjad bin Yusuf, who's Hajjad bin Yusuf? He was a well-known tyrant ruler. History has a one of the most tyrant Islamic rulers. So he's better than Imam Bukhari. No? Imam Bukhari came 250, he was in 90. So Hajjad bin Yusuf is better than Imam Bukhari. Correct? 
No? Why not? Because the, the, the Sahaba's time being the best, it doesn't apply to a fraud, not everything. It applies to certain members. Or it applies to as a whole. That as a whole, this time was the best of all times. Therefore, Tabi as a whole. But it's not necessarily that every single member of that time is better than every single member of the one that comes afterwards. Are you following me? So you have to make, don't make that mistake and assuming that because something applies to the whole, it automatically applies to the individual part individually. Or if it applies to the individual, or apply to the whole. Make sense? So there's a lot, there's a lot of this thing here. And this is the, again a recap here. But the whole idea is, so again, we have a concept. So we all have things in our minds, ideas in our minds. How do humans communicate these ideas? Via words. And normally we get by, we don't have to define it now, make definition of everything. We understand from our way we speak or we converse, we don't have to define everything. However, we get technical when it comes to law, when it comes to fiqh, when it comes to aqidah, when it comes to all these things. Sometimes you have to define things. If not, you get confusion. We have definitions. And let's say we discuss definitions. How do you define things? Other things are defined. We know what it means. We understand what it means. But sometimes we still get confusion. Why? Because of the dalala. How is the word being used? Are we using the lala bil mutabaqa, a complete uh, insignification, partial bil tazammun, or uh, implicative, which is what? Il tizam. So you can get confused in there. Okay? Then sometimes you can get confused in terms of uh, it, one word has two terms, two terms has two terms have one word, uh, all of these things. We have to look at all of these. So before we even go into the next step of making a statement, we have to make sure that we are able to analyze and start to decipher and pick apart. What we're talking about, and if you look a lot of the times, this is where the problem starts from. You go on to a long discussion, but the, the problem starts right at the beginning. That let's define what this is, let's understand this primary issue first. You get what I'm trying to say? If you start from that, it's like, you know, a lot of the problems are solved. You get what I'm trying to say? Okay, so a quick recap. We have concepts. Concepts are ideas, and these are used, these are explained using terms. And then we use terms in all our day-to-day -day activities. Kids use terms, they use toy, they use water, they use food. They don't define them. They have an idea. Human beings are able to just extract money. But sometimes they get technical. So for example, you say, well, there's tax on food. Then you can say, well, it's food. I can say, well, car is food. Bring a car, import a car in. and say, well, there's no tax on my car. My car is food. They have to define it in it. So what, what does food count as? So generally speaking, we don't always definition for everything. That life will get very difficult. But in technical stuff, especially in academics, Fiqh, Aqidah, Law, all of these things, you have to have definitions. And the definition must be inclusive, meaning it's, 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 it's jamit. Everything that's supposed to be included is, is, comes under it, but it's also mani, exclusive meaning, things that don't fall under this word doesn't fall under it. So it's a very uh, mani and a jamit definition. And then I said to you before, we haven't gone through much detail, but a lot of time is spent in the Greek books and the books of Manthing, using essential definitions. And how do, how do you find? Using the genus, the genes, and the differential, the fossil. And that's how you, that's one of the way of defining things. But you don't have to define that way. And the whole idea is once you can get a definition, which people can come to, which is mani, jami, not circular, and it gets the message across and it defines it, that's fine. We go to the next step. But before we go to the next step on statements, we have to say, well, also make sure we're not confusing our words. We know the word is the term, but the terms are all confused. We're using, is it tasawi? Two words, that's two, two, two words, same meaning. Is it tabayun? Two opposite things all together. So we know, are we really differing or are we talking the same thing? Maybe we have some middle ground. Umun khusus mutlaq. Maybe we have umun khusus, umun khusus mutlaq, like this. Umun khusus mewajin, like this. Are you following? And then after fallacies, that before we even start discussing terms and our, our statements and arguments and all that, we can have fallacies. You're not using the word correct, equivocation. That it's being mixed up in how we're using this word. Or divisional composition. Okay, so that's the basics of the first unit. Which we understand how to, sorry I've covered up all of this. How to use words. Make sense? Follow? Any question? No questions? Yeah, follow? Yes? Should we stop here then? Okay, subhanAllah, bihamdi, subhanakallah, wa bihamdi, kawdashadu, la ilaha illa, anta, wa nasakhir, wa nasakhir, wa nasakhir, wa nasakhir, wa nasakhir, wa nasakhir, wa